Winning without utterance. <laughs> In a matter of prayer. Winning without utterance. Someone says, is it possible? That is winning without prayer. Winning without what? Is it possible? You'll find out. <laughs> winning without utterance. Now, many of you know the healing ministry that we operate in this commission shows that you can win without utterance. Now, listen. <laughs> Jesus in John chapter 5, and I'll be very practical in my teaching. If you read 5 to 8, a man was at the pool. This man was there for 38 years. For how many years? Impotent. Jesus met him. And without utterance, without what? Without saying, I cast you out, demon. Jesus never cast out any demon. He just said, take your bed and go. Never made any utterance. And the man woke up. There are cases where Jesus said, cast the devil out of you. But in this case, he never made an utterance. He just said, take your bed and go. And the man got healed. In case you are watching from somewhere you are not used to it, I want two persons who are pain to come out so that you can understand that you can win without trust. And I'll tell you how. Two persons with physical pain. Two. One stand here. One stand here. You, okay, stand here. Young lady, stand here. Where's your pain? That's where the pain is. Where's your pain, young lady? There. Now, I will pray for this lady with utterance. And I will pray for this man without utterance. The two other will get healed. Just watch. By his stripes, you are healed. Do you believe? By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Do you believe? Put a hand where you're sick. Now this utterance. No, you don't need to put the two hands. Just put one hand. Now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command the pain. Go in Jesus' name. I rebuke that pain in the name of Jesus. Move your hand. Move it. Move it. Move it. Move it. Move it. No pain. No pain. No pain. No pain. No pain. This is all trans. This is what? Jesus' name. Move your leg, there will be no pain. Move your leg, there will be no pain. Move it, there will be no pain. Move it, don't bother yourself. Do what you could not do. Something you could not do, you'll be surprised. Do anything you could not do. Do anything you could not do. No pain? Do something you could not do. You couldn't do that before? Eh? No pain? No pain. No pain? Yes, sir. No pain? No pain. Was there, any, <laughs> was there any utterance here? So you can win without utterance. There was utterance here. There was no utterance here. Yeah, two of them got healed. Is this that? <laughs> no utterance here. So how do you win without utterance? Two of you can go, you are healed. <laughs> do two of them get the same result? Yes. So in case you doubt, you say, is it possible? You have seen it real. So even if you are Thomas. Because people are very funny. So, winning without what? Oh, trust. <laughs> so Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. It said, now, thanks be unto God, which always caused her to triumph in Christ. God said, you are Try off is not sometimes, it's what? Always. And I see you win at every time. Amen. We can win in prayers at all times. At how many times? All times. In Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 24. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will 
answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Before they call, before they make all trans, I've answered. While they are yet trying to talk, I've given them the result. So here. To enter this realm in God, there's what to do to provoke divine intervention without praying rigorously. Winning with prayer is not only a function of rigorous intercession as obligations. You can win without sweat. You can win without what? Very possible. How to win without utterance? How to win without what? Utterance. <laughs> I'm going to share with you four factors. But one way to win without trust is the obedient factor. The obedient factor. The what? In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6, it said, And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. When you obey, God answers automatically. You don't need to shout. You can avenge all disobedience by the weapon of obedience. No devil can harass you if you obey. Now listen carefully. Jesus never offered any prayer when he turned water to wine. He just said to them, put water. And they obeyed. And the miracle happened. You have your miracle. There was no way Jesus said, water, turn to wine. He made no utterance. He just said, now, put water. And Mary preached a message. She said, whatever he saith unto you, doeth. John 2, 5. The moment they obeyed, water turned to what? There was no utterance. There was no what? Utterance. He never prayed. He didn't stand. Water, water, turn. I said, no devil can harass you if you what? If you obey. First Peter 3, 13. And who is he that will arm you if you be followers of that which is good? Obedience is your gateway to the realms of answers without sweat. It commits God to answer in your favor. When you obey, you don't shout in prayers. Answers come. So I hear May you be the next to testify. Amen. Do you know the reason why many people are shouting and they are not getting answers? Disobedience. What is it? You know what God said in Zechariah 7 verse 13? Therefore, it has come to pass that as he cried and they will not hear, so they cried and I will not hear, said the Lord of hosts. He said because they disobey, so their rigorous prayers are not getting what? Results. They shake their head. Bah, 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 40 days, no result. He said, if ye be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah 119. So the good of the land is accessible to all, but available to the obedient. If ye be willing and obedient, it is accessible, everybody can have, but it's only for the who? Obedient. May your obedience produce result right now. The many prayers we are praying is because of disobedience. True? Hmm? When you obey, without all trans, results come. Answers come. Answers what? Are you getting upset now? Are you hearing me, sir? Yes, sir. Do you need to pray now to prosper? No, just obey. Just what? Obey. obey. You prosper. You do what? Then, do you need to pray for peace for in the marriage? No, just obey. Love your wife, submit to your husband. There will be peace. You don't need prayer. God will answer you without opening your mouth. True? Am I communicating with you, sir? Do you need to obey to pass exams? No. Just read. Just what? And, and come out of uh, all social activities that will distract you. And you, you get your results. It's true? <laughs> you get what I'm saying now? You will pass. You don't need to 40 days fasting to get first class. So here. 
the second factor. The wind without utterance is the mental factor. This one is very important. The mental what? The mental factor. The mind factor. That's what I mean. The mental factor. The mind factor. Now, look at this scripture. Very popular scripture. Ephesians 3.20. Please, I want you to look at this scripture very well. Now, unto him that is able to do. Shall we read together? I want to go. Now, unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we what? Underline the word acts. That acts means prayer or think. According to the power that worketh in us. So there are two ways God answers. He answers you when you pray. He also answers you when you think. I'm going to explain to you. Many don't know this path of the scripture. That your thinking is also very important. Listen carefully. <laughs> Do you know without prayer what you think God answers? That's why you must be careful what you think. God answers you not only when you make utterance, he answers you also what your mind begins to focus on. Philemon chapter 1 verse 14, it says without, you read it together, I want to go. It says, but without that mind will I do nothing. So, Without your mind, God will do nothing. So your mind has a role to play. Are you hearing me, sir? If your thinking is negative, your prayer will be very frustrating. It will become very frustrating. Most of the battles are lost in the mental realm. Your mind is the true battleground in every conflict of life. Until you win in the mind, you don't win in life. Okay, look at the woman with the issue of blood. She never uttered one word. She got a miracle. Listen. In Luke chapter 8, 43 to 48, she said in her heart, where was the heart? The mind. If I may but touch his garment, there was nowhere that woman uttered any prayer. Listen. God answered that without any utterance. She said in her heart, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. And the Bible said, she went and touched his garment. Did she pray? She made no utterance, yet power was released for healing. Through? So it's not in every case you shout. She said, listen, if I may but the M of his garment. Did she offer any prayer? Did she go there to pray? There was no rigorous prayer. She didn't even say, heal me! She never shouted. It was when Jesus said, somebody touch me. Your faith has made you whole. She never uttered one word. Through? It's in Luke 8, 43 to 48, Matthew 9, 20 to 22. It's also written in the book of Mark chapter 5. From her heart, she connected with God without shouting. Without what? Without shouting. Glory to God. You know why? She heard the story of Jesus. In the Gospel of Mark, you remember the demoniac. The demoniac was the one who the, the, the devil was cast out of him. And the woman with the issue of blood heard from him that, look, there was a man, there's a man called Jesus who has power to heal. Is that true? So when she had that, her faith rose. Her faith did what? Well, faith come by what? So our faith was that, oh, there's a man who has so much power, if you can cast that demon from a demoniac, then my case is not an issue. Now, this same man she had was the man who touched a casket, a bear of a dead young man, and he rose. So she already prepared her heart with her prayers, with her shouting, saying, if a man can touch bear, you remember the Luke 7 episode, where the woman carrying her son to be buried in name, the Jesus touched the bed and he touched. So when she had that story, he said, okay, if such man has some more power, if I touch his garment, he has authority to heal me. No prayer. No what? And she got a miracle. Winning without utterance. Winning without what? Who will win next? In the name of Jesus. You'll be the next. 
it's not every winning you have to rigorously shout. You can win without shouting. Shout hallelujah. Yeah. There are cases you shout, but you can also win without what? Shout. I showed you two examples here. True? Are you hearing me? This woman got a miracle without what? Shout. She recognized the authority in Jesus. And then she touched the hem of his garment. She never prayed. But she connected with the power. May you get what you're looking for. Yeah. That's why you must mind what is going on on your mind. Many of you, your mind is so corrupted. Money to night, all you think about is man or woman. From money to night. It affects the mind. As a man thinketh in his heart. So if you are a miracle person, you will be thinking miracles. Now, listen, mind is very powerful. Every dominating tough, that is the place of your miracle. If your mind begins to think the supernatural, when you stay like this, everything you do, miracles will happen. But most of us are so carnal, so, to be carnally minded is simply to think contrary to God's word in your mind. A carnal person, everything that you think about, it has to do with the things you smell, the things you taste, the things you touch. Are you going to now? But a supernatural person, your mind will always dwell on the word. So, because your mind is breathing on the word, whether you pray or not, they do begin to happen. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When you breathe on God's word, miracles begin to what? In your life without prayer. Just begin to breathe. As a lifestyle, as a what? Meditate. Now listen. Long ago, I've shared this testimony with you. One day I got up long ago and I had sharp pain on my kidneys. The two kidneys had terrible pain. When I mean pain, it was painful. I laid on the bed. I never uttered one prayer. I rolled himself, took my infirmities. I didn't pray any prayer. I said, he took, he took, he took. He took. I didn't utter any word. Took. Then I came down. I said, the spirit of it that raised up just dwell in me. And without anything like Satan, go! My kid me, kaka, kaka, kaka. And I got up. That was the end. I never opened my mouth to say, I cast you pain out. I don't say that it's wrong, but there's another A-level. There's another what? Yeah. Winning without utterance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where you don't utter. So that's why you must be careful what goes on what? Your mind. Some of you, what goes on your mind is very negative. Even as you're in church now. See that babe. <laughs> See that babe. See her legs. Hi. This is a pastor they preach. You know, say this babe, child. <laughs> if you know it, nothing will happen. You go as a babe. It's all, not only women, also some women. See that guy. Chai. She has been tall. Very lanky and fine. Oh my God. You are finished. You are what? You came to church, but your mind is not on what I am saying. Hey. She can't show you anywhere. Let me sing, get money on. Get money You have already destroyed the supernatural. When you're in God's presence, mind what goes on here. God is able to do abundant, above, all we ask, don't think. What you think, God answers. Number three. Are you getting blessed? Winning without what? Number three, the love factor. The love factor, L-O-V-E. Love for God can make him answer you without utterance. In Matthew 22, 36, 37, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy what? Mind. For this is the first what? 
commandment. Verse 38. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Is that through John 3, 16? So love does not require words. It is expressed in actions. Most things we call love, you don't need to talk too much, just express in action. For God so loved the world, he gave. Do you know, if you express love in action, you will not need to pray, you will get miracles. I come again. For instance, if you're a covenant practitioner, you have covenant what? You don't need to pray, your heavens will open in a very dangerous way. Now, let me share, for instance, I, I like to tell you because there's no point. Before this, all this uh, cashless episode, I used to give a particular amount, midweek service. Now, my offering today, I mean for today, is three times that amount in the midweek. Now, what I used to give, I know the amount I used to give. Now, today, what I'm giving today, today's service, is three times that amount. I won't pray, but my heavens will open. I won't make any utterance. Father, bless me. I won't make any utterance. By love, through my demonstration of tripling the offering, it will trigger heavens to open. I won't make any utterance of prosperity, but I will be blessed. I won't pray, money come. I won't make any utterance. By my action of what I'm giving today, heavens will release our blessings. I mean, understand what I mean? So you can win without what? By your love. By your what? Love. Say so here. Say so here. When you win the love of God, you cease from tears. Cease from what? Because before you call, God will answer. May he answer you. Amen. Have you not heard? Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Now say that the heart of man. What can I pray for them? That what? So just love God. You wouldn't need to. All these rigorous prayers won't be necessary. Back, 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 back. You can't. Some of us don't pray the way you pray. Oh. We have some, some connectivity with heaven. Our prayers are short, and yet we are true. If I call you now to pray for this, we are paying. Some of you will shout. Pay! You do, I like, pay! And they tell you, make it go. <laughs> it is not how you shout. It is your understanding. Did you what? It's not here. So of don't shout. So of don't what? Don't shout. <laughs> Yet, this happened. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Are you getting what I'm saying? Somebody close to me was afraid. Somehow I saw a little fear. Not love will make you sometimes concerned for people. And then I just smile. I have a covenant with God that if you dare me, God will tear the person to pieces. I don't need to, I have some dangerous understanding. Somebody would, I don't care who you are, no matter where you're placed. That will be the end of your chapter. There are people nobody can touch. We are untouchable, including you. We are what? And so, noise of people don't harass. Jesus said, go and tell that fox. He called Herod a fox. And that was the end of Herod. Is there everybody who shouts? Eh? No, Jesus just said, tell that fox. That was the end of Herod. He said, and he said unto them, go ye and tell that fox. It was called Herod the fox. He, we read the Bible. When you read it up, you know, he called Herod who? He called Herod the fox. So be imitators of God. They say, and it's the Bible. It's Ephesians 5.1. He said, imitate Jesus. Ephesians 5.1. He said, therefore, become imitators of who? Copy him. So if you call somebody fox, you are copying Jesus. Uh, follow him. Is that? <laughs> Number four. <laughs> are you hearing what I'm saying? The fourth factor is the action factor. Are you getting blessed? Yes. How many will follow this pattern? Without utterance, you get what? Results. You get answers without utterance. The action what? Factor. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. 
The people says, for the Lord is a God of knowledge. By him, actions are weighed. Actions are what? Abraham did not utter any word of prayer on Mount Moria. Yet God, God answered him. In Genesis chapter 22, 9, 16 to 18, when Abraham dropped Isaac on the altar for sacrifice, God said, this action, he answered him without uttering one prayer. Look at it, he said. And they came to the place where God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Is that true? And said, who is speaking? God. I said, by myself have I sworn, said, Lord. God cannot swear by anybody, so he swore by himself. Did Abraham pray? Abraham never prayed. His action brought heaven answer. God will answer you. <laughs> For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not returned thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will do what? Yes. Who was speaking to Abraham? Did Abraham pray? Yeah? Your prayer points are too long. Reduce them. There are, there are small folks who don't pray. God swear. God what? Small folks God has sworn on our behalf. Oh. If God swear on your behalf, who, who, who is there? When God comes back and says, I swear anybody who touch you, I'll kill him. You can sleep. God, God says, I swear. Anybody who dares you, I kill him. Won't you go and sleep? God said, I swear by myself. That, because you couldn't swear by anybody. You know you said true to God, him, true to himself. <laughs> He said, by myself, am I what? He said, that in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiply, will I multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sun that is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess what? Of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. He said, this your action is enough. Abraham never uttered one, he never made any statement of prayer. He never said, Father, bless me now, bless me now, bless me now, action. And God answered him. God will answer you. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Now, if you read the Bible, when God said he was going to punish Ahab, for instance, and bring evil upon his house for their sins, you remember Ahab, the wicked king? Ahab tore his garment and lay flat before God. Without prayer, God answered him. If you read the book of 1 Kings 21, the Bible said, and Ahab, he never uttered any word but said in verse 29, see how Ahab had humbled him, said this God speaking before me, I will not bring the evil in his days. Ahab did not pray, he just tore his clothes in sober reflection. God said, because of your action, I'm not going to punish you. So I hear. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you know that not everything you have to pray, mind your action, you can't look poor and become rich. Your action is already poverty action. You'll be poor. Somebody say you, you want, you way you look morose. You look like people, people pity you. Your action is already an answer to prayer. If I not do like this, what I we can't do now? I mean, that action is already an answered prayer. You can't look cheated and be favored. You can't look sick and become healthy. Until you act success, you don't become successful. Many of us will think it's only what we say with our mouth. No, God answers your actions. Answer your what? Just look poor, you will be poor. Poverty is not how much you have. The look. You stand in a position where everybody will see you and pity you. As you close from church, you now stay like this. Any problem? You see these three children where I hold, they never chop. Oh. <laughs> and you're believing God for a miracle. You're believing God for a... Your action has already made God to answer you in poverty. He didn't pray, but your prayer is already answered by your actions. Okay, let me tell you from the Bible, you'll be shocked. Do you know Hannah, the Bible said, her countenance was no longer sad. Through? 
in First Samuel chapter 1. If you read verse 18, when she prayed for a male child concerning Samuel, the Bible said, I can't, even before she met her husband, her action brought the answer. Listen, <laughs> when you read the Bible, you read deeply. And she said, the handmaid find grace in her sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. And her countenance was no longer sad. Even before she slept with her husband, she already knows she will have a child. Her action was already showing the answer. All the day she was sad, she could not get pregnant. The moment she changed her action and was no longer sad, God answered her. So mind your action. Mind your what? Don't lie down. And want people to pity you and expect to be healed. Nobody even tell me sorry. <laughs> Seeing this sickness start, I, think, I thought that my service group will come. They know if you come. Yes, they will come as brother's keeper. But must you now wait for them to come before you know that you'll be healed? Won't you get up from the bed? <laughs> Nobody, they even pity person for this church. I you in the pit? You know, this church, everybody, they do like saying, get money. Everybody do like no, some, of us, some of us will be poor people. They don't even pity. Oh, you have already kept yourself among the poor. So God has answered you in the midst of the poor. You will remain poor there because your actually shows poverty. Even if you are poor, you don't stop showing yourself as a poor person. See yourself as somebody who's coming out of poverty. You now wear rag, wear such a no, 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 if you don't do like this, no, no, see no, 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 if it had no works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man say, that's faith, and have works. Show me that faith without a works. And I'll show you what? I showed you my faith by my works. Act well, and you live well. Act what? Now, from the days of one suit, if you ever, if we're in this church, from the days of one suit, I never talked like a poor man. I never acted poor. I was always acting like a man who was very wealthy, and God answered me from that day. One suit, when I come like this, I put my hand in my pocket, I said, listen, I'm one of the wealthiest preachers on earth. My wife is a witness. And those of you who are, who are old members, I said, listen to me, I'm one of the richest preachers on earth. I'm rich. And I was wearing only one black suit, but I never said, okay, members, can't you see me every day, black suit, won't you buy me a suit, huh? <laughs> Your actions, God answers them. God does what? So what have I said in summary? The first factor is obedient factor without what? Not obedient politics, I mean obedient factor. But said. So you don't mistake the two. Obedient what? Hey. <laughs> the obedient what? Factor. That is anything God tells you what to do. Obey. You will need to shout God will answer. Then the mental factor. The mental what? That one is the major one that I want to deliver. This mental factor. So even as I'm talking now, you are taking contrary to the word. Most of the spiritual warfare is actually mental warfare. It's actually what? A young boy was in a park. Life story. And while he was in the park, he saw a man throwing balloons up. Yellow balloon went up. White balloon went up. All the different colors went up. Then finally, a black balloon went up. So this black boy was wondering why the black balloon went up. So he called the man and said, excuse me, can I ask you a question, sir? He said, yes, what's the question? He said, I saw that you threw the balloons all went up, including that black balloon. How come the black one went up? Because it was a black boy. So it was what why black balloon went up? So the man said, no. What made the balloon go up is not the outer color, but what is inside the balloon. So it's not the outer. So whether you're black or white, you are all permitted to be up if what is inside you is right. <laughs> well, the black boy never believed that a black balloon can go up. Well, he felt that a black boy, he has to be on the floor. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pronounce you blessed. <laughs> This weekend shall be a weekend of testimonies. Amen. The table is turned against our enemies. 
In the name of Jesus. Whoever is planning evil for any of us, they shall fall into that pit. Go and enjoy peace. Keep rising. Keep rising. April is a unique month to this commission. It's the month where God gave birth to salvation ministries. I decree you will not end the month without celebration. God will make every one of us to celebrate before the month ends. In Jesus' mighty name.